Welcome back to Tech and Navi. Today we're going over day two's constructive algorithms, hacker rank problems, flipping the matrix. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Sean invented a game involving a two by two matrix where each cell of the matrix contains an integer. You can reverse any of its rows or columns any number of times. The goal of the game is to maximize the sum of the elements. And the n by n matrix sub matrix is located in the upper left hand corner. So essentially, and we also want to return the maximum possible sum. Um, we're going to be given a matrix. So right here, explanation, the, the example right here. The matrix, if you break it up, is going to be a 4x4 four four matrix, meaning that each of the four variables will be in their own subsection or their own quadrant. So if you look, 112, 40, 256, 125 would be on this submatrix. 83, 119, 56, 49 would be on this one, and so on and so on. What it wants to do is essentially, each variable inside of the submatrix has a mirror value. And go ahead and drew this for us. Um, I found this image and essentially it draws out a perfect submatrix and the mirrors and the values that you can flip in correspondence to it. So it wants us to essentially find the upper, upper left hand corner submatrix, biggest possible values that are in the rest of the array, flip them out um, in correspondence to what they can be flipped out for. For example, a value, which is 112 in our matrix it can't have a value that's yellow or white or C because A can only be flipped up the other A's. So 112 can only be flipped out with 119, 108, 62 because that's the mirror image of A and that's the only possible reversal that can happen for that specific index. Same thing for B, same thing for C, same thing for D. 42 can only be flipped out by 98, 114, or 83. 125 can only be flipped out by 56, 101, 78. And by flipped out, I mean we can only get the biggest value out of those numbers. Those corresponding color pair patterns in this image that I have on the right-hand corner of my screen are the only values that can be flipped out per correspondence of colors. So C's with C's, A's with A's, B's with B's, D's with D's. And we want to bring out all the biggest valuables or all the biggest variables, excuse me, from the entire matrix into the top left-hand corner and so that when we add them together on the bottom line corner if you see when we add 119 plus 114 plus 56 plus 125 it's the biggest possible value that we can get after flipping or mirroring the values from the other sides of the other quadrants of the matrix into the top left hand corner and the biggest value we can get possibly is 414 now you're probably asking if the mirror image doesn't make sense yet why is 56 right here it's not a, the biggest number out of the entire array or the entire matrix. Um, 101 is bigger, 114 is bigger, 119, or 101 is bigger, let's look at the final one actually. 101 is bigger, 112 is bigger, 108. Why don't we flip that out and move that to the top left hand corner? Because this is gonna help me explain the mirror thing a lot better too, is because if you look at it, 56 is this C right here. It's the C value I'm hovering my mouse over right now. This C value can only flip around with the other C values or the other pink values. So if we look at it, what's the other pink value? 49, is that bigger than 56? No. 43, no. 15, no. So the biggest C value for this possible index, which is essentially row two, column one, is 56. That's why there's no other value that's being flipped out. Um, to prove this example, essentially, let's look at the next one, 119. The biggest possible value for 119, if we look at the original one, it was originally 112. 119, which is this A value. 108, which is this A value. 62, which is this A value. 112, which is this A value. The biggest out of the A values, or the blue values, is 119. So we can flip it out there. We can't randomly rip a submatrix's value from anywhere on the matrix and put it where we want to. We have to essentially only take the mirrored values into the matrix and this is why the visual on the right hand corner of my screen is very helpful because it shows what variables are able to flip with one another now that we have that out of the way let's go ahead and code it up so to do this essentially we're going to start off by making our length function and we're just going to go ahead and pass in matrix and this is going to return us to the the size of the matrix and it's going to be a four elements that are being returned. So if we were to print out n, it'd be give us four. And that's gonna be helpful for us when we try to coordinate where our 
submatrix is and which values we can tri flip from the other matrices and bring into our top left hand corner matrix. We're going to start with the counter S and this would essentially be the 414 value that we're going to essentially return later on. It's going to hold the value of the biggest possible variables that we can get inside of that matrix so that when we're done scanning through the entire matrix the biggest possible values that can be inside the top left hand quadrant would be held in S or S variable. We're going to have a O of n um, squared time complexity here because we're going to iterate through it twice with two for loops and they're going to be rest nested. We're going to have a range of n and we're going to do floor division to essentially get the and you want to do floor division because you're working with indexes and you don't want to be returned to decimal value. So when we divide the size of the array by two, we're essentially getting the top left hand quadrant because that's half of the matrix. So that's why we do range floor division two. And we're going to have our second loop go through the same exact iteration. But this would be counting for J values or the column values. After we have that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to increment S as we go through the other variables inside of the matrix and we look for the mirror var mirror values. And I'm going to bring it back up right here. Now we're going to be going through and we're going to look for the each mirror values. To make our lives easier, instead of reversing it and returning a list, which would be very tedious and unnecessary, we're going to basically just scan through the matrix only one time. And instead of returning something, we're going to go to each specific mirror value as we traverse through the array. And I is going to essentially hold our row value. So as we increment through the rows, and we can only go up to row 2 or row 1, essentially, because of the index element. And as we find values that are the mirror content of the original position that we're in, we're going to essentially add it to sum instead of creating a new list and returning that list and adding the values of that list up. So we're going to go and look at this A position, then we're going to look at this A position, then we're going to look at this A position, and then we're going to look at this A position. We're going to use a max function to find the biggest one out of all the A positions, and we're going to add it to sum. It's going to make our lives a lot easier and prevent us from needing to traverse through the entire array and create another list. So I'm going to go ahead and write it up. Okay, so I'm back. This is essentially what we did. We added S's matrices and what we are doing right now, as I explained, I'm going to explain one more time. What we're doing right now is we're going over every, sorry, we're going over every single iteration and their corresponding mirror values. And we're seeing which one out of the mirror values is the biggest one. So if you look right here, we're passing in a max function. So it's going to return essentially the biggest value at matrix IJ. And starting off the first iteration here, let me actually move this to the right side of my screen and this on the left side of my screen. So starting off the biggest iteration, I starts at zero, correct? And J starts at zero. I or J enters I. And both those values are zero, zero. What this is returning now is What's the max function? This is what it's doing. This is what line 22 is doing. It's saying what's the biggest function between 112 and we're getting 112 because at position i and j, 0, 0, it's going to be index position, it's going to be 112. So what's the biggest value between 112, 119? And it's doing that. The math is happening all there so it's essentially taking the value next is going to be taking the value of n which is the length of our function 4 minus j which is 0 currently minus 1 3 so it's going to be saying what's the value at 0 because first iteration i is still 0 what's the value at 0 3 for j 0 3 we come right here um, let me actually make it full screen again 0 3 we come right here first column 0 3 last one 119 like I mentioned, it's our A, it's our next A value, 119. Um, and then what's the next biggest value? N minus one, four minus, or four minus zero, N minus I minus one, four minus zero minus one gives us three. So index position three, J, J's first iteration zero, 
three zero we go third row one two three this first column 62 which is our other a value 62 and then the last one's 108 and then it's going to return the biggest value of that which is 119 and it does this for every single iteration so next iteration it's going to be one and then consider one in for your j value and do the math and it's going to give you every single mirrored value and that makes our lives so much easier because now instead of creating the list we just have the sum of all the mirror values and what we need to do is return the sum of the biggest mirror value so HackerRank's platform is really glitchy. But yeah, so all we need to do is return the sum of the biggest value. And when we go ahead and submit that, oopsies, um, yeah, let me move my return statement back there. When we go ahead and submit that, we essentially, let me show a test case. We essentially get the app we want because we have to return 414. We have to return the value that's the sum of the top left hand quadrant after it's been transformed. Um, I hope this video explained it well enough. I'm gonna go ahead and put this up on my screen if you guys need to take a more thorough look at it. This was flipping the matrix. Um, please like, comment, share. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to explain it further in the comments. And I hope to make I hope to see you guys in the next one. I hope to make more videos. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for watching and catching the next one, guys.